Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on the video. Today it's a Linux tip and I'm going to show you how to reset the Network Manager application if your internet goes out. This is something that a lot of people complain about. It's not really operating system specific. I'm going to show you how to do this in Linux, but even if you're running Windows or Mac, you still may run into problems where you're sitting there working and your internet just quits working everything appears to be the way it should be on your end but you just have no connectivity you don't have to restart the computer to fix this in Linux there are commands that will restart the actual application that takes care of these things in the background so I'm going to show you how to create a very quick command to take care of that depending on how often you actually need to do this. And yes, those of you who have been watching my videos and following my channel will notice that we are running Ubuntu, and I will talk more about that at the end of the video and tell you why and show you what I've done. But right now, for those of you who care about getting connected to the Internet, let's jump into talking about that. Now, the reasons that your machine might me dropping its connection to the internet could be a lot of things it could be something going on in your router it could be something going on with interference to your Wi-Fi connection it could be something going on with your computer like network manager not working properly there are a ton of reasons why this could happen which makes these problems very hard to troubleshoot and with Ubuntu 1604 when that first came out there was the dreaded network manager bug which was giving people a lot of problems that has been resolved pretty much but every now and again you will find that network manager gets unstable and unfortunately the folks who program network manager have not included a reset button anywhere yeah you can reconnect but if the program is misbehaving in the background it really doesn't help. What you need is a way to completely restart that program that is running in the background. The first thing that we're going to have to figure out is whether your computer is running one of two services and we're talking about Ubuntu based distros here. So this could be Ubuntu or Linux Mint or anything based on Ubuntu. Ubuntu uses an init system which is an initialization system uh, which means just a program that keeps track of all of the programs that need to be started when the computer boots up to take care of things like networking and other services that run on your machine and which version of Ubuntu will determine which init system you happen to be using if you are using Ubuntu 14.04 then it will be upstart and that goes for Linux Mint 17.3 as well anything based on later versions of Ubuntu I really don't remember exactly when they did this, but they switched to System D, which has become pretty much universal in the Linux world these days for an initialization system. So the commands are different, and it's all going to depend on how late of a version of Ubuntu or Linux Mint you happen to be running. And if it's an upstart, then the command is here, and the syntax is slightly different if you are running a system D based system. So figure that out first. This is the command that you need to put in a terminal to restart your network service. Since we are running Ubuntu 14.04 in this video, I'm gonna copy this and now I'm going to open myself up a terminal. I'm gonna put this in there and you can watch and see what happens. So we paste and now I'm going to issue the command and it's going to ask for my password because you have to do this with administrator privileges and you will see that it is blinking and it's saying that it's restarting the service and you see here that it is saying that I'm disconnected now offline and it is resetting so it's definitely working and that's what we want to do now you could just run that command if you want to you can just tuck that away somewhere write it down or whatever if you don't do this very often but what we want to do today is we want to make this just a little bit easier we want to create a single command that you can easily launch from a terminal or even create a launch or two on your desktop and just click it and it'll just do it for you so we're gonna write a little script and this is basic shell scripting 101 here it's gonna be super easy to do so 
what we're going to do is we're going to actually do it in Linux Mint 17.3 for this video and I'm going to show you how to do that next all right we have Linux Mint 17.3 running in a virtual machine here and when I restarted the video to start talking it went a little goofy to get that out of there thank you very much clear the screen so we have this lovely virtual machine and we are sitting at a command prompt and what we want to do is create our little script so what we must do is get our cheat sheet so we can copy and paste and make this really slick and smooth so the first thing that we want to do is open up nano which is a text editor so we'll copy that command and throw it in here and you see that we get a blank page which is exactly what we want I'm going to cut and paste my script text in here so it's just a couple of lines and it looks like this that's the entire script so let's copy that and we'll just paste that in there boom and now we have our script and it is in nano and let's take a moment and talk about what we're doing here well the first line is the what we call a crash bang or hash bang and that just tells the system what shell we're going to want to use to run these commands and we're going to use bash and then this is just a note here saying what this is you notice that there's the, the little hash mark or pound sign there and that tells the system to ignore that it's just a little bit of text to tell the system what's going on now here's our command which we have already tried and we're gonna have the system just stop for about five seconds and then we want to go ahead and exit a terminal and the reason why we're going to have it sleep for five seconds is just so you can see some output on the screen so it doesn't run by real fast in, in case there's any errors or just some confirmation that it actually did what it was supposed to do so this is the entire script <laughs> really not much to it and what we're going to do here is use control O to save our script and confirm by hitting enter so the script is saved and it, it's now here so what we want to do next is we want to make that an executable file we want to make it actually work and act like a program so we're going to use chmod you do not need root privileges to do this because this is a file that you created in your own home folder and we are going to just put plus X and then the name of our file which is refresh and then I'm going to use the tab key to autofill that so I don't have to type it and avoid typos which people laugh at me about I'm very sensitive about that you know all right so just go ahead and issue this command if you get no output it did exactly what it was supposed to do now to test our script we want to run it and we're going to run it from within our home directory so it's not going to be in a path somewhere that it's going to do it automatically so we need to tell the system that we're going to run this locally and that's what the dot and the slash tell it it just says hey run this program in the directory that I'm currently in that's what that does and so we will tab to autofill now we are going to enter it's going to ask for my password because we need root privileges and it worked it reset the network manager and we're reconnected and we're good to go so hopefully that will have fixed the problem and then it exits the script and we are done so to make that a command that we don't have to run by putting the little dot and the slash in front of it what we want to do is move it to a directory on your computer where a lot of other commands are stored by the way directory and folder they're interchangeable so I might go back and forth on that a folder is usually when we're doing it in a GUI and when we're working at the command line we call it a directory but it's still the same deal so what we want to do is move this and we also want to make it so anybody on the computer can use it if they have super user privileges and we're going to do that by issuing the sudo because we're going to do this with elevated privileges we are going to move this file and we are going to put it in ben where a lot of system commands are stored and just enter 
Now, I didn't have to put sudo in because I had already given it the sudo, super user do command. Okay, that's why it didn't prompt me for it. But now I should be able to just start typing ref. And now I can just get that command by pressing tab. So that's nice. Let's run it again to make sure it works. But what if we want to make this available in the menu? We need to create a launcher. Linux Mint makes this super easy to do. If you're running any other desktop environment, you're going to have to look up on how to create launchers for it. I'm going to show you how to do it in Linux Mint today. So just right click and we are going to create a new launcher here. And we're just going to call this one net refresh. Now we'll put our command in. Make sure I spelled that right. Yes. Refresh net. And we'll put a comment in here so we know what it does. Refreshes. Did I spell that right? Yes. Refreshes network. C O N N E C T O I N S. Okay. So we have created that. We definitely want to launch this in a terminal because it requires a terminal and we want to see what it's going to do. So we're going to create that and it's going to ask us, hey, do we want to put this in the menu too? Well, why not? So now we have an icon on the desktop and you can put this down in the panel if you want to along with your other quick launch icons and that way you could just refresh the network connection anytime you wanted to. So let's go ahead and click on our little command. It's going to ask for the password. It's opening a terminal, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. All right, now it gives me the password. It resets the connection. It waits for about five seconds, closes the terminal. It is done. Pretty nifty, huh? That is basic shell scripting 101 and how you can create your own command to do something that would require more typing or you to remember another command and then you can make it super easy for other users. So this should be in the menu. And if I go here, it should have put it, what it said, it put it in other. Yeah, well, actually, let me see if I can just find it. Cat just knocked over the trash can. Now it's not automatically sticking in here, but you can go in here and tell it to show other or I might have to. Let's just log out and log in. I bet you it'll show up then. Log in and log out of a virtual mo machine. It took that a couple of seconds to log out and log back in. So now if we go to our menu, you will see that we now have other and our little command is there, which means that we can now add it to the panel if we want to. And there you go. Pretty cool, huh? So that's how you would add a little command to your system to refresh the network manager or any other service for that matter that is being kind of strange. Reinstalling Network Manager sometimes helps to fix that problem as well. So just go to like Synaptic Package Manager, uninstall, and then reinstall. Okay, gang, the little cheat sheet here is going to be in the description to the video. So if you want to actually give this a shot for yourself, you can look at the commands that I have posted there and follow my directions. It should work if you're running on any Ubuntu or probably work on a lot of different operating systems. However, I can't guarantee the, your results because your mileage may vary. Systems are different from one machine to the next. And so you can proceed at your own risk if you want to go ahead and write the scripts and move it to the binary directory and all that stuff. But it's really kind of basic stuff. So it shouldn't break too much, but don't blame me if it does, okay? <laughs> all right, for those of you who are interested in these sorts of things, I am running Ubuntu 
1404 on the HP machine. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when I first got this machine, this was the operating system that ran the best. And over the last few months, I've tried out a bunch of different distributions, always gone back to Linux Mint 17.3, and still have just a tiny bit of instability in the system. And so I wanted to go ahead and roll back to Ubuntu 14.04 just to see how it would work. And I haven't used this in a while anyway, so I kind of wanted to do it. So don't take what I'm saying as like, oh, you ought to go back to Ubuntu 14.04, everything after it sucks or anything. No, this is just something that I'm doing. I want to see how it reacts hardware-wise and how it runs on this machine. This machine is hopefully going to be replaced sometime, maybe after the first of the year when the tax money comes in or something like that. I might have the funds to do that. So I'm just trying to keep it going. It's uh, getting a little bit long in the tooth in and of itself. And one of the things that I'm having to do here is I'm having to run the 313 kernel because this machine doesn't like no kernel above 4.2. If you put it on 4.4, any of that Ubuntu kernel series, then it really gets fussy. I think it's something to do with the integrated Intel graphics on the machine. And yeah, I could get a separate video card, I suppose, but I really don't feel like dumping any money into this thing. It's a five-year-old computer, and it's had a lot of hard use. But uh, I'm using the 313 kernel, but for those of you out there who are going, my God, 313, that's so old. You're putting yourself at risk. Why are you running such an ancient kernel? Please note here the number that this is revision 96 of this kernel. Stop that. I don't want to highlight every line. We'll just highlight that line then. No, we're going to highlight half the line. Don't you love it when stuff doesn't do what you want it to do? Anyway, notice that the revision here is 96, which means that Ubuntu for Ubuntu 14.04, they are maintaining the 3.13 kernel and making sure that security updates get in there and fixing bugs and things like that. So it's perfectly all right to run on 3.13. No problem there. All of my other systems are now running the current 4.4 Ubuntu kernel. I have one Linux Mint on a laptop and I have Ubuntu Mate on another machine. They are running the 4.4 kernel and are current and they work just fine. It's just this computer doesn't like that kernel. Funny though, this machine runs really good on kernel 4.7 and 4.8. <laughs> so if I install something like Arch, or if I would move the kernel all the way ahead, then it would work just fine. But just to keep things nice and stable, for the time being, we're going to leave this one on 3.13. That's for all you kernel heads out there. I realize that doesn't apply to everybody. And, you know, I was using Linux Mint 17.3, so a lot of that is based on Ubuntu 14.04. And I'm not seeing that big of a difference. I did get a slightly older version of LibreOffice than I would like to be running. I may update that through a download or a PPA at some point. But for right now... I'm not noticing that much difference. I don't use LibreOffice very often, and the only reason I do use it is to create very simple documents. So I actually don't need the latest version. And I will wind up this video with this one bit of sage advice that I got from an engineer named Jeff Stone, and this has been 20 years ago now. We were working together to install a Scott Studios automation system in a radio station. We had spent $40,000 on hardware and the software to do this. And we were trying to get it going, and he was installing the latest version. And he said, okay, that's it. I'm done. We're going back to the old shit. It works. <laughs> so he actually rolled back to like three versions back. Guess what? That automation system ran like that for the next 10 years, never having gotten updated. So... As long as you're getting them current internet updates, man, you're okay. You don't always have to be on the cutting edge. It's like, I think CentOS now ships with a 3.12 or 3.13 kernel, and that's the latest that they've got. So if you're running servers, it's an updated kernel, just like Ubuntu 14.04. But it works, and it's stable. And right now, that's what I need is something that's stable and works and gives me a good platform for virtual machines and things like that. All right, so thank you for watching. Do check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great articles about Linux. Also, check out uh, Easy Linux on the web. And check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you do, give it a like. Links to all of that are in the description for this video along with the script that we were working with today. So we will do it again soon.